Right, welcome to this Tactica and Showcase video. It's for uh, Storm Talon gunships here uh, for the Space Marines. So one of my favorite models for Space Marines in general. Uh, it's a fantastic looking model, it really is very, very cool. Uh, but in this video here, we'll take a look at the model itself. We'll zoom in, take a look. Uh, mine's painted up from Imperial Fists. And then uh, we'll check it out in the rules here, maybe roll up some dice as well, just to illustrate how uh, this flyer for the Space Marines can be used. So. Uh, I have two of these for my Imperial Fists. I love them as a pair. As, in, as a lone vehicle, they're okay, um, but I just think in pairs they look great. Or if you can fly them alongside a Storm Raven gunship, it just looks fantastic. So the base here, look, I've used some old coins, or you can use bits of lead, uh, just to weigh it down. It just means when you're putting uh, the base on terrain at an angle, uh, it's a nice bit of weight to it and the model doesn't go over. So here's the second one. And it just slots into here like so. I just think the pair of them working together is just very very cool. So there they are. I have painted the red marine inside the pilot and just carefully went round uh, the glass here. Or maybe there's a trick to painting that glass actually. We'll zoom in here I think it might be easier if I just remove this one from the base and we'll zoom in and take a look. So there it is. If you like the way this has come out for the Imperial Fists, there's an in-depth painting tutorial on the Plus channel. Uh, I'll show you how to paint one of the rhinos, but the exact same process on the rhino as you see here. Even painting the yellow, you know, it's tricky enough, so I'll cover that in that video. There and then on YouTube. On here on YouTube there is uh, the regular painting tutorial uh, for the Imperial Fists that's available as well. Yeah, glass. Some people have asked. So I painted the whole model, uh, except the glass. That canopy was kept separate. That was never glued on. I kept that separate away. Painted the whole model, and that means I was able to paint the marine inside. Some people dark out their windows, which is the easy option. But I think it looks great, that shiny glass window, and then you can actually see the, the pilot inside. So with this, the trick, this has never been varnished. Here, this yellow, it's going to ruin it. You can't put varnish onto that shiny uh, acrylic glass there. That it'll be destroyed and it'll be misty and ruined. So, but you still want to protect, you still want to be able to put the paint on and protect it. So what I did was take some very fine sandpaper and very carefully, because this is all raised here, just sandpaper very, very gently all the way around the raised areas where I wanted to paint. So just sand it around and it just roughed up that edge being very careful because you want to go down inside and, and scratch the, gra the glass. So very carefully all the way around. Just sanded the whole lot. And then that gives you a surface where the paint will go on and it won't run off again. But it's very, si very fine sandpaper and just taking my time going all the way around. <clears throat> then I then painted my yellow on. All way around, about a couple of coats did it. And then did my uh, washes, just the same process for painting, so then the washes on top, I think it was the Agrax Surf Shade wash around all the cracks and it filled in nicely around the window edges, just where the window pane, the clear bit joins the yellow, filled that in, that just linked that all in nicely. Then repainted and tied it up with the yellow, just as seen in the paint tutorial, and then done my chipping effects and so on. Then to try and keep that paintwork protected, instead of varnishing, you can buy uh, Games Workshop do some Varnish, Art Coat I think it's called, but their own sort of paint on varnish. That's probably the best stuff to use. I just use PVA glue, the same stuff I use for putting the, the basing art materials on. I just painted that round with a brush over the paintwork and that's never worn off. I've had these for years now, lots of games, and that's on there. Uh, nice and secure, no problem at all. So just for, I just thought of that trick whilst I was showing you this here, but that's just how to do those canopies. Did the same exact same process for the Storm Raven gunships as well. Uh, on on here actually there is an etched design. You can you could quite so put it in the light there so you can see it glinting. It's like an etched design. I just filled that in with black paint. I think it's etched in there for you. Filled it in black paint, just wiped away the excess. Just that sort of targeting array type thing there as well. But uh, and then stuck that on. Another trick actually, God, there's a trick here that can, right, you've got to be very careful when you stick this canopy on. If you use super glue, 
when it dries, it can flare up with sort of all white mist across your window and ruin it as well. Disaster when that happens. Once it's done, it's, it's ruined. So I think I glued this either with plastic glue uh, or I, PVA glue, I think I used. So, I mean, that, that canopy sits in quite nice. So I think I use PVA glue. But uh, just be careful with super glue. That's the that's the main point I'm gonna say to you is watch out for super glue. I've done it a number of times, done it a couple of my dark held up windows. And uh, it, when it dries, it can all flare up inside and then it's stuck and you can't get to it and clean it up. It's a, a nightmare. So PVA glue or plastic glue uh, to hold that in place. And you, you put the PVA glue on, you think that's never gonna hold it, but it does. It sticks paint to paint pretty good. And because of the way that sits there, nice and tidy that window there, and it's not really getting it knocked around. It's pretty solid. I haven't had a window fall out yet, so I think I'm pretty sure that was actually PVA glue I used uh, to finally stick that on. And uh, no misting up there at all. It's all dried. Really good. That's those tips there. Uh, practically help you out with these as you paint them up. So there it is. Uh, we'll zoom out now. Take a look at the rules. So there it is. So these are not transports, they're just gunships. So it's their firepower is why you're getting hold of them. That is the number one reason to take them. And really the way they're configured is, well, anti-infantry is your main use for these. This is what I want these to do. Supporting it and sort of a tactical use for them. I'll sort of demonstrate it to you a bit later on how I plan to use these. So yeah, you've got the Stormhawk. That's an option to take here. Uh, the Storm Raven for your, your heavy firepower potentially, and then your tra ability to transport as well. But uh, Storm Talon gunship, power level nine. Uh, it's still 10 wounds, only toughness six though. It keeps its three up save for space range, which is really good. And it's nice and quick. So up to 50 inch move with this thing. So it's fast across the battlefield. Standard loadout for that is uh, Twin Assault Cannon. That's the weapon on the front, just there. And it's the loadout that I have. And then uh, two heavy bolters as well, uh, which is okay if you're trying to take out sort of infantry type targets. Just to get an idea on points. So Storm Tanner starts 110, that's cheap enough. Uh, but then your Twin Assault Cannon all of a sudden will boost the cost. 44 points now, it's actually gone up from 35. <laughs> so it's that. And then your heavy bolters, two heavy bolters, you can add another uh, 20 points in total onto the cost for that. So you're then looking at 174 points. You're pushing on towards 200, so they're expensive enough. Uh, instead of the heavy bolters, you may replace the two heavy bolters with las cannons. So you can go for some real heavy firepower. If you want to take two las cannons, uh, you can go for that. That's going to be 50 points instead of 20 to go to go for that heavier firepower. Uh, or you can go for a Skyhammer missile launcher. There's just a single purchase of the Skyhammer missile launcher. That's the configuration that I have. Uh, it's 24 points for that. Just cover it here. It's range 60, so the range is superb. It's heavy three, strength seven minus one, it's D3 damage. And what's interesting, it add one to all hit rolls for this weapon against targets that can fly. So that's, you know, jet bikes, flyers, jump infantry and so on. It's minus one from the hit rolls made against all other targets. So, uh, there's minus one to hit rolls. And it's heavy as well. So you, your firepower's not gonna be that great uh, against yeah, non-flying targets. And the fact that if you move with this heavy weapon here, uh, you're on another minus one to hit. So you're gonna have fives to hit targets with this if you're picking on the wrong target, but it's better against targets that can fly. So the sky is okay. It's not, it's not terrible and it's not amazing. It's sort of stuck in between. It's, it's all right. And you're not really sure what to fire against. Would you try and pick off a few wounds against a vehicle? Maybe. Would you fire at heavy infantry? 
but it's only minus one on the AP. And if you fire it at Horde, it seems a bit overkill with strength seven. But um, so uh, your options then. This one already places two heavy bolters with two las cans, uh, a Skyhammer missile launcher, or a Typhoon missile launcher. See, the Typhoon missile launchers are a better option. You've got range 48, uh, heavy 2d6 for your uh, frag missile. So, you, you know, between 2 and 12 shots of that. If you do cho choose to go for softer sort of horde type units, then you've got a dedicated round for that. But if you do go heavy, you've got heavy 2, strength 8, minus 2, and d6 damage. That is really good. Problem is, Typhoon missile launcher has always been expensive. Yeah, well, no, they've they've chopped it down here. It was 50. I was going to call it out as 50, but chapter approved now has made it 38. So, 14 points more expensive than the Skyhammer, but it's vastly superior. I just, I don't, I got the point, I'm just thinking about my own list now. I don't think I've got the points though to, to add a Typhoon, but I think the, the better option is to take the Typhoon missile launcher. It will push your cost up on towards 200 points, but it's got a lot more kick to it than this guy hammer, I think. But uh, that's the better option to go for if you can. Uh, you know, and you're able to split fire now. You can fire off different weapon systems at different targets, which is the great thing. So don't worry about mixing up, you know, like a heavy type weapon an anti-hordes type weapon, but the Typhoon can do both, you know, it can support, give some great support with the Twin Assault can, or if it needs to fire off it's a heavier target than it can. So it's airborne, it cannot charge, can only be charged by units that can fly, and can only attack, or be attacked in the fight phase by units that can fly, so it's a bit of protection there, to some degree. It's got supersonic, can make an extra really fast move, a 20 inch move. It's hard to hit, minus one for the hit rolls, because it's a flyer, that's useful enough, really does help. Strafing run, so you've seen that you get the minuses there for your moving heavy weapons, which is a shame. Storm Room Gunship ignores that, these don't, so they're on minus one. But it comes with strafing run. Add one to the hit rolls for this model when targeting an enemy in the shooting phase that cannot fly. So, uh, that, that helps. You know, you've got your Typhoon missile launcher, you're firing at a vehicle on the ground, uh, you're flying along, it's forced to hit because of the minus one, and then plus one, so you're back up to threes to hit again. So, pretty good. Uh, you can add one to the, so we've done that one. Hover jet, before this model moves in your movement phase, you can declare it will hover. This is a, a great thing about these. It's move characteristic, it becomes 20, so it's still really fast. Till the end of the phase, it loses airborne, hard to hit, and supersonic to the beginning of your next movement phase. But, it lets you remain stationary. Yeah. Yes, it means that you, there's not that minimum move that you have to make when you're flying. Uh, you can go stationary, you can sit as you are, you can just declare that you're going to go into hover jet and remain stationary. It means you can fight your normal ballistic skill. I'm thinking about Typhoon missile launchers, a fantastic range, range 48. And then you're still going to get your bonus with strafing run is kept. Yes. So that means you potentially can get twos to hit if you go for hover jet, remain stationary, and then using that strafing run ability. So that's very, very reliable firepower with them. So that's really good. You got crash and burn rules for that, just there. There's no clear loadout for these. Again, depends what you want them for. If you want anti-tank and need a bit of punch, then take the last cannons. If you need a bit of both, then Typhoon missile launcher gives you that ability for sure. Yep, and then anti hordes is your again Typhoon missile launcher can do both. Twin assault can. That's a solid option. Uh, you know, heavy twelve. <laughs> load of shots, range 24, strength 6, minus 1, great for clearing away infantry, really, really good. Even taking on Space Marine equivalent models, that AP minus 1 just really helps to knock down their resilience. So, how I plan to, to use these then tactically in a game, and that's to have them as the pair, 
and to because of their speed is whatever point in the battlefield needs that fire support because they're so quick they can turn up and appear where they need to go so uh, wherever on the battlefield uh, the opponent's starting to break in or there's a, a threat somewhere then I want these to zip in and then offload their firepower one of them's okay but the pair of them working together I uh, can dish out yeah, that's 24 assault cannon shots, for example. That's going to cause trouble for an infantry unit. So, you know, I've got a defensive line. I've got my tactical squads. I don't want the tactical squads being contacted in close combat and so on. So the idea is to zip these in and then hose down that main threat with a load of firepower as much as possible. So using their speed that way, tactical use for these, trying to get them into position and offloading that firepower. They don't even need to get that close, actually because there's no sort of rapid fire type stuff here. So even, you know, visually, don't even need to get too close. They can just sit right the way back. So it's out of trouble. Uh, and then just offload that firepower in support. That's the idea of them. Uh, the other one is to do, just illustrate here. Because they're so quick, the opponent needs to watch out. Say these are miles back in your line. This is an enemy unit here, enemy character. You can play tricks with these and go for like character assassination. If your opponent's not watching out, you fly these nice and quick over the top. Closest model, you're then able to fire at the character and, and hose them down with a load of anti-infantry firepower. Another little trick you can do, uh, again, tactical use for them, sniping away at, at enemy characters is another use for them. It's because you've got a 60 inch move, you can fly across the board very, very fast. But I, I think the pair of them working together is the key. Uh, we'll illustrate now. I think I'm going to roll up some dice just to show you. Okay, so we've got a situation here. This is, uh, you can imagine this happening in the game. This unit of Orc boys bursting through the lines. The rest of the Orc army perhaps is further back. And this is the point of the battlefield where there's trouble. So I need to call in support. Um, so, you know, other armies that are out there, you know, other armies that are out there might call in artillery support, for example. But in my Imperial Fist list, I want to call in air support here uh, to try and neutralize this immediate threat so i want to try and get rid of them to protect them i need to call upon uh, some quick units to turn up save the day so these don't have to get too close again you can, can do but range 24 is where they need to get to uh, the great thing is you don't, you don't have to be facing the, the right direction to shoot you can fire from any angle so i could just fly them in over the top and then just fire back on these no problem at all so let's just say we've got the pair of them and the mission simple just hose them <laughs> Those those all boys down. So also the Sky Hammer missile launchers, they fire depending on your priorities to bring those down or not. We'll see if the two lots of the twin assault cannons can do it. And we'll say we fire these off at something else. I say the opponent has a truck and we'll try and take that on. So uh, so we'll fire at this truck then, first of all, see if we can put some wounds on that. I'm just thinking, I, I doubt I'd go into that, unless I'm desperate to get the wipe out here. So, just double checking. Sky Heaven Missile Launcher. The truck can't fly, so it's minus one to hit rolls and I've moved. So it's fives to hit, uh, but then uh, it's strafing runs, so it's fours. Okay. Uh, threes to wind. Two wounds get through. Five up, save, not saved, and two to three damage. So we've got three wounds there. We chip away a few wounds at a truck, no problem. So then we'll do our assault can. The first one. So heavy 12, it sounds really good, but you're going to get some misses here. Uh, it will be forced to hit, then straight from run becomes freeze to hit again. So yeah, half of missed. Three swoins though, strength six. Minus one, four all boys brought down. See, one of them not that effective, but we'll go again. But I think the pair of them working together is a, a better option. Threes to hit, lots of misses hit. Threes to wound. And it's AP minus one, it's another four. So they've shot up eight orc boys in that round. Not that amazing. So, maybe putting the Skyhammer missile launchers 
in there would be useful. We'll do one more round just with the uh, salt cannon. So, because I really think those sky hammers will just cause just a few more casualties and be useful enough. So we'll go, we'll go the whole lot this time. Starting to see the benefit of the Typhoon missile launcher. If I'd have chosen, yeah, we'll do it in a minute. I'm serious, seriously inclined to go after the Typhoon missile launcher, especially the points reduction. Anyway, threes. Starting to really see the benefit of that. Threes to end. That's much better. All right, so seven. So really have ripped a chunk out of them with one round. And then the next one ties them down. Oh, it's a blistering round there. That threes to hit really helping. Threes to wane. It caused a lot of trouble here for these orc boys. Another seven. That's all them except one. All right, so yeah, just wrecked that squad. Mission accomplished. No, because uh, the Typhoon missile launcher times two, because you've got two of them, is uh, scary actually. Time for missile launcher, fire the frag. 4d6 shots. Yeah, 13 shots all of a sudden. Gonna come through. There. Threes. Uh, fours, it's strength four. We'll get saves. Have sixes, save one. No, you just brought seven boys down. That's very, very effective, that, the pair of them working together. Very, very good. And then let's say uh, there was the truck to fire at. So we'll fire the heavy two. That's like four shots here, leading threes. Uh, threes to wound. Uh, <laughs> fouled that time around, let them have a go. Threes to hit. Threes to wound, strength fate. Two get through. And then uh, minus two. Six up saves to block. Nope. And two to six damage. Seven. And then uh, ramshackle on one of them. Ramshack on one of them. No, all right, so seven wounds come through. That's uh, significantly more damage. Better, way, way better than the Skyhammer missile launcher. It's sort of st stuck in the middle, that one. It's not really effective against, it's okay against everything. It's not really that effective against anything in particular. But the Typhoon missile launcher is much more dedicated. Those two options that are clearly one for anti-infantry, one for anti-tank, and either of those do a better job at their intended target. So Typhoon missile launcher, if you have the points, and uh, if you are just going to go anti-infantry, then take the heavy bolters. Yeah, it's definitely an option. Taking the heavy bolters, I think, is uh, the way to go. Because, uh, you know, six shots here. There's two of them. That's another 12 shots. So you've got 12, 12, and then 12 on top. That would probably be enough to hose them down. So if you just say, right, they're just going to be anti-infantry, then you can go that way. But having said that, because they're strength five, strength six, you'll be able to uh, chip off some wounds off vehicles as well. It's not entirely redundant against vehicles, but uh, I hope that's sort of illustrated for you. Yeah, their firepower's not blistering. So again, this is, type of, uh, this is a unit you want to try and keep alive for as many turns as possible, uh, just hosing units down one turn after the next. So I don't want to be reckless with these. I want to try and preserve them and be sensible. So we'll try and keep my distance. Uh, and just sort of hold at the back uh, or along your deployment zone you can uh, pivot and, and fly along like so you know not getting too close to your opponent offloading that firepower and maybe that's another reason to go for the typhoon missile launcher either of those two rounds is range 48 so you can chuck out some very long range firepower but just hanging right the way back along your own deployment zone and even sit there in hover mode hitting targets on twos <laughs> with them and that's something to think about and just sitting there with typhoon missile launchers at a, a very long range range 48 miles away from a lot of uh, the range of a lot of other weapons that can shoot at you and play them that way and even have them stationed next to things like lieutenants and chapter masters and captains and so on just to get grants and rerolls really trying to enhance their firepower as much as possible like i'm starting to see the benefits of the typhoon missile launcher so don't be surprised if i might try and squeeze that in somehow we'll see it's difficult because i don't really have the points but um, i can definitely see the point of taking that option if you have the points though because you start to push them up to 
about 200 points though if you go after that option to optimize them to that level but that's the tactica then for the storm telling gunships fantastic looking model uh, and helpful for turning up just where you need them and hosing down a threat and uh, I, I think especially effective against infantry and hordes uh, with their twin assault can uh, they're the other best option to take if you want either anti-tank or anti-hordes is to go for the typhoon missile launcher uh, if you want to go pure anti-infantry just take the heavy bolters and if you want to go for a more of an anti-tank sort of kick than the two last cannons is the option as well but uh, that's the tactical video keep a look out for more tactics It'd be fascinating to hear from space stream players that use storm talons what combination what weapons loadout you go for and the tactical uses any other hints and tips that you can think of uh, there then check out the comment section see what others have said about how to use these flyers for space marines but keep a look out for the imperial fists and working on them at the moment hope to get them into some battles soon all being well thanks for watching and tune in next time